and 31. Let's keep it going in the Zoom room. Uh, we know he's got to head over to session, so we wanted to bring uh, a Democrat Senator Clint Rogel onto the show to talk about the adult use cannabis rules and regs. Good morning, Senator. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. There he is. All right. Hi. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. All right. So uh, we're about to play our. We we did a little segment on. Uh, I kind of called it a crash course in a <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> Which I, I mean, Senator, I know you're going to go into session, but I, I really think we're going to push the envelope a little bit uh, with this. Uh, we had Will Park, Will Sparkinson on uh, last week about the cannabis uh, rules and regs. Can you tell us um, what are the, uh, what's the status of those uh, rules and regs right now? As you know, Senator. Um, so uh, my understanding is they're really close to finalizing the rules and regulations. I think the last meeting, they even said they were going to send some over to the compiler of laws to mm -hmm. begin, um, looking at how to, I guess, put them together. Um, so, but they haven't put out a final product yet, so I haven't seen what's in it. Oh. Uh, once they do put out a final product, then the next step is to have public hearings. So uh, my understanding is they're working on the logistics of the public hearings. This is the Cannabis Control Board now. So the Cannabis Control Board is going to have to come up with the logistics for the public hearings. I'm not sure, uh, you know, in light of COVID, if they're probably going to try to do some sort of uh, virtual public hearings. Um, I, <coughs> excuse me, I did send them, um, <coughs> excuse me, I did send them, uh, it's not COVID, don't worry. I did send them some, <laughs> I did send them some, uh, the SOPs that we have in the legislature for our public hearings that enable us to hold uh, public hearings um, virtually. Mm -hmm. So I sent that to them so that they could kind of look at what we do and see how they can perhaps adopt some of the things that we do uh, to help guide them in when they're coming up with how they're going to hold their public hearings. So they're going to have to have, I forget what the law says. So forgive me, I don't remember if there's a minimum number of public hearings, if it's just one or if they have to hold three. I don't exactly remember. I know that they were planning initially on holding three because when they were going to do it um, pre-COVID, their plan was to sort of have one up north, have one in the central, and have one in the south. That was some talk that I heard. You know, they were going to have like these town hall type uh, public mm -hmm. hearings, but I think they're probably going to have to change that now. So um, because of COVID, they're probably going to do some sort of virtual public hearing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they're going to stick to the three public hearings. They may, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure yet, but they at least have to have one public hearing. I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Um, so after they have the public hearing, then they go back and they take a look at all the comments received. And after they, uh, look at the comments received, they can decide if they want to continue to adopt the draft of the rules and regulations that they have or if they want to change the rules and regulations based on public testimony and the comments they receive so they still have another option to change it again and put out a final a final final version i guess and then that final version um gets submitted to the legislature uh and then the legislature has i believe it's 90 days to act on it and just for for clarification the rules and regs this is for uh commercializing cannabis right correct yeah this is for the sale of cannabis right. this is to allow uh businesses to begin to apply for the licenses so it, it spells out all the licenses and and how they work and what sort of rules and regulations are going to be to regulate the industry okay all right uh you know senator it was uh, we're, we were trying to get the gov on uh, this morning and uh, knowing that we we're going to play this uh link on location uh link gets lit thing uh, Bri and I were kind of kicking around. She was like, hey, should we ask the governor if she's ever, you know, smoked uh, cannabis? Because we had the AG on last week. I don't know if you saw that. But Attorney General Levin Camacho said he has never smoked or ingested cannabis, which I thought was cool. I mean, whatever. It is what it is. That's neat. I mean, I can't even imagine being a stone lawyer trying to remember this law and that law. I mean, I'm pretty sure you just need your, your wits about you. But anyway, so... It was funny because Brie and I were like, oh, I don't know, you ask her. And I'm like, dude, it's the law of the land. I mean, it's legal. I think we kind of need to start normalizing uh, cannabis if it's not already. It's just part of the, the conversation. So how do you enjoy a cannabis, Senator? I'm curious. In what ways, uh, I mean, do you or, or, or don't you? Or what's your thoughts on it? Yeah. Um, well, I... 
Because I feel like, I, like Vree said, I feel like it's like if you ask somebody, no. like I said, do you like, wake hey, and do bake? Do you wake and bake? Do no. you smoke weed? That, that politically, maybe some of our elected no, officials. First of all, first of all, well, I've been, I was accused of being stoned during the public hearing on right. the on the cannabis bill. Right, I remember. But that. I was not. <laughs> so first of all, we don't. I do not believe in using it during working hours, and right, obviously, right. people, Dub Guam employees, are not supposed to use it at all. And during working hours, especially, I don't think anyone should use it during working hours. So I believe, though, that if you're off working hours, now the governor has put out an executive order saying Gov Guam employees shouldn't use it, right? Right. So I believe that, uh, but I personally believe that, and this is gonna, where it's going to get tricky. I need to find a way to um, address this later on. I've been approached by people, right. both in the private sector and the public sector, to say, "Hey, it's not fair. Can we use it on our off time?" Right. I think you should be allowed to use it on weekends, and you should be allowed to use it, you know, outside of working hours, just as if you're going to have a beer. Right. So, ultimately, that's what I believe we need to uh, move towards. Um, now, if you're asking if I've ever consumed it before, yes, I've consumed cannabis before. Um, of course, I have. Uh, I mean, maybe of course is the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, I did. Kind of, the guy who kind of the guy who introduced the bill, so I. <laughs> you have to, um, right? <laughs> I, people would people would question research, your motive, right? I had done research on it prior. Yes, yeah. both um, research. Uh, <laughs> Both research of the of the science behind it, um, as well as personal research. Let's right. put it that way. There you go. <laughs> some personal research on it. Right so, on. Uh, yeah. That's why when people talk about the effects of it, I know what the effects are. I've right. tried it before, so I right. know what the effects are. Right. So, so people can't BS me and say, "Oh, you're gonna go crazy, or you're gonna you're gonna start seeing um, reefer you know, madness, yeah. or you're gonna start hallucinating because that's just not one of the effects of it." Right. Yeah. Um, so Where's that one those at? Those are the effects of LSD, <laughs> you know? So those are effects attributed yeah, yeah, yeah. to other drugs that yeah. have been uh, attributed to cannabis. Senator, uh, is that so? Is that kind of a loose end of yours that you maybe, and how do we even begin to address that? You're right, where people apply for a job, if they're ingesting, smoking, eating, whatever, adult use, legal cannabis, and then they go apply for that job. You know the science behind these drug tests. I mean, you could pop positive for cannabis, and not have smoked for a couple weeks. So, yeah. So how do we uh, how do we system for a month? Right. So how do we address can, that? Like legislatively, I'm thinking. Yeah. So I think technology is what's going to enable us to address it. I've seen um, that uh, there's a lot of advances in technology, and I think as we improve our technology for testing, um, we'll be able to have some sort of legislation that says um, if you've tested at a certain level or once we can establish what levels are levels that show we need to establish levels that show levels of inebriation versus you've had it in your system from before right mm -hmm. and so um there there was a company that was bragging that they were going to have real soon a sort of breathalyzer for cannabis that mm. would be able to if you're inebriated or not i don't know what's the status of that it was in the testing phase um, but I know that that's a lot of companies are working on solving this issue right. to improve the testing. But I'm certain that eventually we'll get there. Um, other than that, right now, one way to look at it is, um, um, and this is what I've told a lot of employers is, you know, just look at your employee's performance. I mean, if your employee is showing up to work stoned and they're not performing, that's the first indicator is that they're not performing. Right. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, drinking. Technically, someone can drink alcohol the night before, and we know this. I mean, everyone has experienced this at their workplace, whether they've done it themselves or they have coworkers who've done it. Just about every workplace has, you know, experienced this, where people show up to work hungover sometimes, right? Yeah. They mm -hmm. yeah. went to happy hour. Happy hour went a little longer than expected, <laughs> and then they show up to work hungover oh. the next day. Right. Um, sometimes. People can show up to work reeking of alcohol the next day. Well, usually employers let them work as long as they're able to get their work done. Now, if they start showing up to work just really drunk and they're getting into fights or causing trouble or whatever, that's where the employer steps in and says, hey, I think you've got a problem with alcohol and right. you can't show up to work drunk, you know, and you can't. I, I don't know, if, well, Senator, I've never heard of anybody showing up to work like, oh, man, pardon me. I'm still so stoned from that joint I had last night. Oh, man. Oh, God. I tell you. <laughs> Exactly. And that's the other thing I, I had to explain Ooh. to people. And 
there's there's really no such thing as a cannabis hangover yeah, <laughs> you right. can't be still except uh potentially with edibles right edibles yeah can stay and we're gonna get longer. into that senator we're, we're gonna get into all so, that uh, people I did need wanna, to be cautious with uh, edibles I wanted, edibles yeah i wanted to ask about since uh this became law um have we seen an increase in uh, arrests for people driving under the influence of cannabis um you know, I haven't looked at the numbers, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure. What but I don't yeah. think I, so. I haven't heard. I haven't yeah. heard about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I haven't so heard I, either. I don't think so. So, okay. but I I would like to look at the numbers. But mm. I, um, I think I did see that there was some information about, uh, and I may be wrong, but a few, maybe like last quarter or there was a, a crime report that came out that showed some of the crime had actually gone down. But that mm -hmm. that was like. That was maybe a quarter ago, so I, I don't know what the recent statistics are. Right. Okay. Well, well, thanks, Senator. I uh, appreciate it, uh, you know, breaking uh, bread with us and um, discussing this um, topic. It's high time we talked about this this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's high time. Right. He's been waiting to say that. Seeing, uh, right on. I look forward to seeing the link you guys did uh, on, on location with uh, Melk or Manabusin, right? Yeah, we're gonna. That's we're coming gonna, up soon. Yeah, we're gonna play that next, Senator. Thank, thank you so much, Thanks, though. Okay, Senator. Thank wash you. your hands. Good luck today. Thank you. Right, wash your weed. Um, Nine forty-two. We got to take a quick break.